They look good. So, how far along are you guys? Uh, we're ready to tack the front triangle. So the the wow. the front three three tubes and the head tube and the bottom bracket are ready head to tube, go. Bottom bracket and then the seat post tube. And the seat post seat as well. Tube, yeah. yeah, yeah. So they're all they're all mitered up and, and ready to tack. Okay, so next up we have all the pieces of titanium ready and we're going to just do a last check in the fixtures to make sure that everything fits perfectly and then we're going to go ahead and drill the purge holes in uh, these p bits um, so that the uh, argon gas, the purging gas, can fill th the, uh, the entire frame. In the, the rear portion of the bike here, we've got our dropouts that can fit like this, uh, just right on the fixture. And then we'll have a bolt with some washers on here, and we'll just run those through. And pretty simple. This will uh, get us the proper spacing. We're going with a 135 axle, so um, that, that'll that take care of that for us. Um, I've made a, a square hole on each, on each side. We've got the square pegs on either side. Um, the chain stay is going to be a line here. And then we're going to have the drop out here. Um, and then I plan on having a square peg fit in this hole on either side. It will reach over the chainstay and grab a hold of with a little claw or something uh, right here. Grab a hold of the uh, seat stay. Okay, so another little fun thing about this project. So we just did the math and we're paying about $2.71 per gram for this bike. And um, so with that note, we're trying to save every gram we can. That way we're saving every $2.71 we can. So as you can see in this ring, we actually drilled holes. I think we did 12 um, in here. Um, I'm going to weigh this tomorrow, and we'll figure out how many grams we saved. I think we saved about 3 quarters of a gram, so that's uh, almost $2 right there. Here's another update. Uh, we've just finished welding on the stays here, as you can see. Um, next we'll be doing the seat stays. Also, we're going to talk about how we did the mitering, some of the process. You might be wondering. So we used these pieces, these 3D printed pieces. They're supposed to imitate the dropouts here. Um, so they've got this cutout here, similar to this. Um, and then they've got the cutout for where the stay will end up. So we can stick the stay through, through here, and then scribe it. And that'll give us the line we can work off of for the filing. Uh, and it works pretty well. That's what we've been doing the whole time uh, for every one of the joints. Um, so next we'll be doing the seat stays. Uh, as you can see, we've got uh, a different type of sleeve. Um, it has these flat portions on here so we can slide it down and keep all the bends in plane, in the same plane. Um, so in the same plane. Um, so we'll just trace along that with a scriber, and that'll give us our file mark. This we did for a few reasons. The biggest reason was because we because we had these custom bent. The best way to do it was to 3D print what we wanted and then measure it with using reverse engineering principles, um, and then. We could convert that data into um, into a language that the bending machines could use to reproduce our part. Uh, we got it pretty close. Um, you can see the curve we wanted isn't isn't what exactly we got, but it should be fine. Uh, we'll have clearance for the tire, and that's what's important, along with the endpoints. The endpoints are the same. So, so here the extra portion of the dropout where it's not really needed the strength we're going to dremel that out to make it lighter and uh, more clean looking yeah it'll save maybe 
30 grams total doing it on both sides so you can see we've got a little bit extra there um, so we usually like to start the mitering process with this larger file I have no idea what the curve on it is it kind of changes as long as, as uh, along its length uh, it cuts like a saw it's pretty aggressive so we usually like to rough it in with this guy and then we'll switch to this file which is a little more fine it's soft like a fish um, and then we'll go to uh, this rat tail so that can get more detail work uh, we've got some sandpaper we will use at the end um, and the drum wheels we we'll use to usually just get the chamfer we use this to uh, chamfer it and um, for the bigger miners we'll drill a lot of holes like this one this is a uh, off the down tube I think um, um, we drill a bunch of holes and then we'll connect the dots with the saw to cut it off to get rid of the excess uh, it looks like a pretty cool torture weapon Sorry, I'm still in work. Um, here's an explanation of how we made. This is specifically for the stays, the seat stays, but we also did this for the um, the down tube. So um, we first in CAD we three we uh, we CADed up what we wanted, exactly what we wanted, and then we went ahead and 3D printed it. And this, as you can see, we actually weren't able to to fit it on our printer in one piece, so we had to make it two pieces. Um, so we could 3D print it. And then we can put it up here on this um, this clamp, and then we can scan it with this arm. So this this arm measures things. Uh, it has out of all these pivot points. It can calculate where in space uh, the tip, the, this end is, and it uses a laser um, that goes in between the these two fork uh, fork pieces. Um, and as as a as a laser is broken, it reads where that point is in space. So with that, you're able to scan the part. You scan the straights. Uh, you tell it what what bend radius you used, and then you can uh, scan the endpoints, and it will tell you all the information. So that's how so that's how we made um, the part from CAD 3D printed, and then we made this. This gave us all the correct information. You can take it from the machine uh, with all this information, and you send it to over to the bender, the bending machine, which is right over there. I do also want to mention that this project has by no means been perfect, and you can see right here, uh, we've actually put some Bondo, uh, I know I'm pretty janky, but um, we've actually put some Bondo here um, because we made a mistake on our calculations. It was difficult to cat up these stays because they have really strange geometry. Uh, so we ended up having to move them out from our original design and you can still see here that it's pretty close to the edge the weld actually creeps right up to the sur to the inside surface uh, so we we did have to do that in the end it did work but if we did this again I would like to not do that so just want to point that out so here are these teardrop pieces I've made out of bits of tubing and they're for internal cable routing. And this one will go about right here where the cable will come in the frame. And then it'll come down the top tube through the purge holes here in the seat tube and then down the seat stay. And then it'll come out somewhere around here with this smaller teardrop piece. <laughs> Just peeled the tape off the head tube after drilling the hole for the brake line. Look at all those little grains of weight right there, those shavings that we collected. This is just on the piece of tape, but we also vacuumed a bunch out. Okay, we've just drilled the hole here. This is the um, seat stay uh, with the brake mounts here. Uh, this hole here is going to be for our brake cable. Um, so it'll kind of come in on an angle, right like that. And we've got a little teardrop piece right here that will fit over the hole just to add a little bit of strength for the strength lost in the in missing material. 
All right, so we're finally on the home stretch here. We just finished welding up these stays here, these seat stays. Uh, they came out pretty good. Um, we've got uh, this piece here, this little teardrop shape to help reinforce for the internal routing. As you can see, we've got our steel cable um, in here. Uh, this will be our pull line so we can come up to the top and pull through uh, our actual brake line. We're probably gonna be doing this next. Um, never internally routed a brake before, so this will be a new experience, along with a lot of this stuff on this bike. <clears throat> um, we did have to change something with the stays, so you can see we've got pretty close tolerances there with the tire. Um, there's my finger. So we actually ended up uh, denting, putting a putting a dimple in these tubes uh, to get some more clearance. Um, we've got we've got a fairly generous amount of tolerance down here. Um, oh yeah, and then just to show that we actually made this bike, we have these rubber bands on here. These were used to hold down um, the seat stays for attacking, um, and there's no way this rubber band could have gotten on here. Um, after this was welded, so it just goes to show. I don't know how long we're gonna leave these on here for, but it's kind of cool. Um, so we've got our brake mounted here. Um, this is the these holes here for the bosses for the brake are the first parts of this project um, that we had cut into a tubing without doing it by hand. So these were actually machined. Uh, we had um, the machinist at my work. Uh, he was able to give us a hand and um, he just punched two holes, two, uh, two slots for these. So this is the only thing, Every everything else we mitered by hand, every every part on here. Um, this was by far the hardest up here at the head tube um, where the down tube came. We had to hollow out the down tube and then it mated with the head tube. This was the hardest, it, it took several days to do that. Um, other than that, the uh, right up here was the second hardest. It was difficult to get the seat stays to line up. Where we're taking weight savings to the next level, at least trying to, is um, in this fork here. So normally on a fork you'd have the two studs coming out here that mount the front brake. Um, but since we're not going with the front brake, dirt jumpers don't normally have front brakes. Um, uh, so we decided not to go with it, obviously for weight reasons. And then since they don't really need brakes as much as say road bikes or mountain bikes, we decided, well, we guys might as well just cut them off since we didn't need them. Um, so you can see here, 